Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another Historical Humans Reacts and today we are going to China to look at secret underground passageways that were discovered in the ruins of a 4,300 year old city. Ooh, is that Radical, not man. clickbaity enough? Yeah, I don't know what is. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so the, uh, the city in question is uh, Hao Cheng's Way. Uh, in northern China, and uh, about four thousand years ago, um, there were. Uh, <coughs> sorry about that. About four thousand years ago, uh, the city was a massive, uh, sprawling fortification with uh, multiple defensive walls, uh, under which. Uh, ran a, like, system of underground tunnels forming a subterranean transportation network. Yeah, so the city itself was a stone city that sprawled across about 15 million square feet. And they found six tunnels underneath the city that were used for defensive purposes. Uh, a, a secret series of underground passageways that helped as a hidden transportation network. Which is honestly, I think, really fascinating. It's it's a pretty uh pretty uh, effective way if you think about it, to move troops around to areas, especially if you're moving through a heavily populated and urbanized zone, not having to push through crowds or deal with streets or you know rubble or wreckage in the way, but instead being able to just go under them and bypass all of that uh, chaos. You know, it's you know, as far as a for you know a defensive structure goes, that's actually pretty effective. Yeah. yeah, especially if there was ever an invading army that may not know about the tunnels. Could be a great place to move around, to change your location. But yeah. the cool thing about this is the archaeologists found it well-preserved. A lot of times when we find tunnels or remnants of tunnels, we find the collapsed nature of the tunnel, which we can usually tell based off of different soils. But here you can see it was carved right into this rock. Yeah, that's yeah, still, usually we find. Yeah, and that's probably why it was survived because it is, it is moving. You know, it, it they effectively hollowed out a solid stone to do a lot of this. I could not that's imagine being the archaeologist exploring these tunnels. I would be, honestly, I think I'd be shitting myself the whole time. I'd be like, I, terrified of what's around the corner, or what traps may lie dormant. Are you kidding me? I mean, Your reaction should be secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. These secret <laughs> I'm just tunnels. Going through, like all the horror stories of these spelunking trips gone wrong. Of like, okay, I'm just gonna squeeze into the three foot tall hole now. Bye, everybody. So these tunnels were around five feet, um, and around twenty feet down. And the yeah. inside of the tunnels were between three feet and six feet tall and roughly four feet wide. So these were fairly sizable tunnels, especially for the people that occupied them. Like, that's a lot of space for a tunnel, especially, like, you look at other tunnel systems throughout history, specifically in, like, Vietnam with how small those ones were. Yeah, I think, I think the key here is that these were part of a city defense system, and yeah. thus you were expected to carry... Uh, you know, possibly, you know, boiling pitch through them or, you know, so other supplies. You know, you needed to be able to actually carry and move, you know, well in, you know, metal body armor, most likely. Well, and it 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 very much seems like this city was stemming from the military defense side of things because it was a strategic location at the edge of an ancient alliance. And the city itself had a complex defensive system where they had three concentric walls, in addition uh, with structures along the walls, uh, very few guarded gates and trenches around the city. So there was controlled access, there were structures around the walls, they were obviously guarded, so this was quite a significant defensive fortification, which uh, the interesting thing is, in my, in my mind, the archaeology mind, I guess, I seem to think, like, when it when a civilization builds defensive structures, it usually means that it's a period of unrest. Whether aggressive military tactics or defensive, either way, there was some hostile actor in the region that that led to the need for defensive fortifications. Uh, fun fact, uh, this is northern China, 300 miles from Beijing. 
Um, so if the Chinese are not fighting each other in a civil war, Mongols. <laughs> yeah. uh, you have both problems in this region for most of history. So defensive fortifications were a big one. And the fact that the city was built out of stone and ca- quite literally carved out of the stone shows you just quite how resourceful people are. And 4,000 years old for a city is incredible. That is ancient. Yeah, not to mention uh, carving it directly out of stone shows you just how much defense was being prioritized over any sort of ease of construction. Yeah, like they didn't build a wooden fort. No, they carved it out of stone. Yeah, we didn't we didn't build something on top of a giant rock. We built it out of the giant rock. <laughs> so quite literally have some uh, some angry neighbors that may not be the best. But this is something that's interesting, and another thing I think is kind of cool to highlight with this article is the site was found in 2005, but the excavations didn't take place in earnest till 2019. There really is a delay, and we talk about it with the publications, of the how long it takes information to get to the news and to get out in the public. This site is clearly super important and honestly really interesting. I'd be curious to see some of the information that comes out of it. But we've known about it for 20 years, and it's just been excavated in the past five. And we're just now hearing about it five years after it started being excavated. Fair, yeah. Like, there there really is a lag, but this could truly give us an insight into this region of just their political and social structures especially within a city because you can see the differentiation in the classes within the city just by looking at the remains like i said i'd be very curious to look at the scientific report that actually came out about this because we look at the news articles we look at the more publicly mass produced because it usually comes with images and tends to be more easily digestible and it's also what you know the general public gets to see so it's good you know it's you know good to keep up with you know what is actually being released as far as knowledge goes yeah so i'd be interested to see what the institute of archaeology at the chinese academy of social sciences and the china archaeology network actually publish about this i have a feeling that this is definitely not going to be the last we hear about this either just given its scale and complexity like just the fact that the tunnels came out in the news tells you that there's going to be some more stuff that they're still researching. Yep. But I, I think that's a good point for us to wrap up on this reacts. If you guys enjoyed watching, leave a comment down below, drop a like, and subscribe if you want to see more. We'll see you in the next one.